Welcome to the Gold Coast, home to a world of thrill-seeking attractions, picturesque beaches, and the finest dining this side of the Pacific. It's no wonder it's Australia's favorite place to holiday. Except if it's raining. We came to the Gold Coast aiming to paint sunlit beach scenes, shadows, movement, you know, that whole day at the beach, that whole atmosphere. But we thought we didn't want to lose the whole trip and go home disappointed. So we thought we'd start up at Springbrook. There's Purling Falls, really lovely, um, just natural setting. It was raining a little too hard, so we thought we better sort of um, save that for another day. We then ventured down to the Coolangatta. There's a lovely uh, outlook, aerial perspective, overlooking Kira Beach, which is a world-class surf beach. Unfortunately, there wasn't a good spot for me to set up and still to be able to see what I needed to see. So we headed north, we got to Main Beach, found a really marvellous little scene that I felt was super paintable, but still very interesting. Uh, it had a very dramatic sky, with that low light, that dark, deep water, that really did lend itself to being a good little painting. Still was gonna require some control and discipline, uh, but I was happy that I'd found the scene to paint. So we headed back to the Dorset, so let's see how I go. This scene, I'm probably more looking at it as a cloud study, uh, as a, of course a beach scene. So we've got to get that water in. It's probably one of the biggest, darkest areas, excluding the cloud, clouds in the sky. So I'm getting quite a bit of viridian, phthalo, sort of my pre-mixed green into this. Of course, with a bit of ultra blue and alizarin and even a little bit of yellow ochre, just to get that depth of water but also it's acting as our darkest dark and we're using it up against the white water of the waves. But being uh, low light, it's going to make all the mid-tones a little darker as well. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But we can still keep quite a bit of uh, warmth and a little bit of color coming through right at the foreground. And that'll work in our advantage as well, because those, other than the light or the white water, there's not a great deal of light values or light in the scene, obviously. It's uh, very overcast, been a showery day, rain coming through, and so that was the, the light effect for the day. And this almost being sort of a little over 50%, sky it's almost like a cloud study so i find one of the best tricks to do is to just mix up a mid-tone even though i'm going to put a little bit of light in right where that main big cloud is on the top third to the left but as you'll notice it's mostly just a mid-tone there's not a great deal of tonal change so that kind of is a great way to simplify now we get into the water, it'll be titanium white and just a tiny little bit of French ultramarine blue, just so that it's not uh, too white, too stark, because it is actually at quite a distance. It's probably at least 100 to 150 yards away, 150 meters away. But it's kind of that almost tertiary focal area, that wave in the distance. I always find with the simplified subjects is really getting that foreground to work because the sky can be a fraction muted, can be fairly loose. Uh, the water, I'm starting to tighten things up on the wave, but it's always the foreground. And that really does ring true with most paintings anyway. Uh, that's why I always try and look for a really great foreground with it being the closest, closest to us, that's always the, the most important part. But I think the thing that I'm doing now, dropping in some little figures, is that dark up against the light. When I was first sort of looking and uh, I could first see this scene, that was the big takeaway was, one, the light on the wave, the white water, but it was those dark little figures shapes up against the the white and i did want to get them 
a little more gestural, not too literal. Uh, and sometimes that's one of the hardest things to do is just to get that one brush mark, that one uh, little stroke with the brush. And that's where actually I probably haven't done it for a while is where you'll grab a, just a grouping of figures and just do some figure studies. And I've kind of gone away from putting small figures in my paintings. So I may have to get back to do a little bit of that practice. It's a marvelous way to simplify and, and just get that uh, general movement. And as I said, yeah, gesture of the figure, because the way that a figure moves, the way the, the, the point of balance, whether it's on the left foot, the right foot, the, or the left or right hand side, really does play a huge part. And of course, doing some figure drawing, a life drawing does not hurt at all. That's one of the harder things to actually uh, be able to, to do because it's uh, something that has to be organized and, but still hugely beneficial when doing figurative work or figures, even if they're small, uh, we're still aiming to get that simplicity and I can notice that I'm getting those figures in between from uh, the spacing a little too even. So that's a little bit of a concern, but some of those things kind of happen on the fly. I like where I've placed this final uh, figure, the, the bigger figure that's closest to, to the viewer. And I can always uh, push that right hand one back a little and even edit it. Edit it out if need be. Uh, I'll use a range of brushes to get this final part, just making sure that the brushwork remains as fluent as possible. As you can see, I'm really working that foreground. It really wants to be that one brush mark. If you're ever viewing my paintings and you'll see uh, a simplification, you may think, oh, Collie does that just one go, one attempt, but sometimes it does take a little bit. So that's probably the best lesson that I could give you with this painting. Well, that was a pleasing little painting to get done. Uh, it's nothing like sort of pulling something from the fire with all the weather concerns and rain and difficulty. I did have a little bit of trouble around where the figures were and uh, came in with really some quite strong titanium white. And the foreground gave me a bit of a, uh, a tricky sort of situation to encounter. Maybe in future I'll have to go in with a better plan. For me, that's the lesson I've learned on this trip. Thanks for watching, all the best, and bye for now.